welcome to Essential 100, our journey during 2023 through the message of the Bible in 100 readings. Our readings are taken from Whitney T. Cunningholm's book, Essential 100, published by Scripture Union. Each week we have a reading from the Old Testament and one from the New to help us reflect on the message of the Bible, God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Today we are encouraged to read 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 29 to chapter 19 verse 18. You might wish to read through the whole passage today as well as listen to these few verses from it now. But first an opening prayer for today from the book. Lord there are many voices competing for my attention right now but the one voice I want to hear most is yours. So the story we're reading today is the story of Elijah, the prophet of the Lord. I really would encourage you to read the whole passage. It is so dramatic. I can easily imagine the story as a film, preferably with Charlton Heston as the, in the title role. But here are a few highlights. So starting from chapter 17, verses 1 to 6. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kerith ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kerith ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So while Elijah is staying with the widow of Zarephath and her family, God miraculously supplies them with food. Then we read from verses 17 to 22. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord Elijah the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Moving on to chapter 18. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Elijah then challenges the people of Israel to choose between Baal and God. Reading from verse 22, then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. There then follows an almost comical scene where the prophets of Baal try to call down fire and fail miserably. Reading from verse 36. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. 
Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. Elijah then sends Ahab off to eat and drink before the rain starts, and they go back to Jezreel. Chapter 19. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and how he had called all the prophets, killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah then falls asleep and then he's woken by an angel who feeds him and sends him on his way to Horeb. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Reading from verse 9. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very, very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. To the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of, mouth of the cave. He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, um, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Whitney T. Cunley Holmes says in his book, one fascinating thing about this passage is that it introduces us to two Elijahs. The first one is the bold, fearless prophet who won a dramatic victory for God. The other is a depressed, scared quitter who ran from God. The truth is, serving God is hard work. God sometimes allows us to have great successes, but because we are human, we sometimes crash and burn. That's why no matter how strong we are, it's important to take time for rest and renewal. Ultimately, the thing that will sustain us most through the challenges of the Christian life is consistent day-to-day -day communion with God. That comes from spending time reading his word, praying and worshipping with other Christians. Those are the things that can reignite our hearts for the things of God. We should appreciate and remember the spiritual fireworks when they happen, but the thing we need most is the ability to hear God's gentle whisper. I don't know where you are at the moment in your Christian journey. Maybe you're walking closely with God, hearing him tell you what to do like Elijah did, willing to put your life and reputation on the line as you're so sure of what God is saying. Or perhaps you're at rock bottom, so tired and burnt out that you run away from God and can barely hear him or perhaps most likely, or somewhere in between. I can remember a time when I felt very sure of what God was saying and telling me to do, but others didn't see it the same way and I ended up very disillusioned, 
and ready to give up. The trouble is, it's not that easy to give up on God because he never gives up on us. He could have said to Elijah, I've worked miracles in your sight. I've protected you from evil rulers, the most evil rulers that Israel has ever seen. What more do you want? I think I'll leave you to wallow in self-pity. Let me know when you're ready to serve me again. But God isn't like that. He sends an angel with food and drink. He tends to his practical needs and gives him time to rest. And he shows him where to go. And when Elijah gets there, God meets him and speaks to him. He also asks, what are you doing here, Elijah? And then listens to him. Elijah tells him how useless and isolated and fearful he feels. And then God tells him exactly where to go and what to do next. He shows him that the end is in sight. He's picked out a successor for Elijah and he shows him that he's not in fact alone. There are 7,000 others who've not given in to Baal worship. So next time you feel worn out, that your ministry is going nowhere, that people are out to get you, try to remember how God has led you and spoken to you in the past. See past the current circumstances to God's bigger picture and put your hand back in his and follow him. And if you really can't clamber out of the pit of despair, ask a friend to remind you of how they have seen God's hand on your life and then take their hand to help you back to a place where you can find God holding out his hand to you. Whitney challenges us by asking, have you experienced spiritual fireworks in your Christian life recently? Have you heard God's gentle whisper? Let's pray. Father, open my eyes today to the ways I could be an influence for you in my world. I'm willing to trust you to make a difference through me.